Now, the chords on GarageBand are very, very useful indeed. They mean that any non-instrumentalist can still get a chord out of the guitar or the, or the keyboard sound here. And there are all sorts of other things like scales as well. Please do look at my channel for those. You can see an in-depth uh, explanation of scales and what they do and how to use them. So this thing here, we're in the key of C at the moment. Now I'm going to change, well I'll just show you briefly, the diatonic chords that are available in any key on GarageBand are chord one, which is a major, C. Chord two is a minor, that's D minor. Chord three is also a minor chord, that's E minor. Chord four is F major. Chord five is G major. And chord six is A minor. Now there are eight chords here because we also have, if we look at the one at the end here, B diminished. This is what happens if you, let's just close that down and get the piano keyboard up. This is what happens if you play the three notes and you keep moving up. You've got C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. Now that one doesn't sound right. Uh, and the reason for that is that the distance between the outer two notes there has been reduced by one semitone. That sounds more consonant than that. It doesn't sound right. The others, they're fine. So that chord is B diminished and that's why it's on the end here. It's been included because it is technically technically belongs to the key but has limited usage. We also have B flat. Now the chord of the flattened leading note or the flattened seventh of your key is a welcome addition to rock and pop music. Not so much in the sort of classical world but very much in rock and pop so that's why it's been included. Now the clever bit here is on the piano sound we've got the the white areas here and then the gray areas down the bottom here. They represent essentially what you do in your left hand and right hand on the piano. So the right hand would be chords and the left hand would be bass notes. So the reason there are three bass notes is because you have two. So if we're in C here, we've got two C's an octave apart. And then the one in the middle is the fifth, which is the next most important note in your bass. So with this, you can create a pretty complicated rhythm by just playing with the those little white or gray boxes there. So I'm going to change the key now. Um, I'm going to change it to E major very briefly because I need to explain that you can actually take the chords here and play them with a different bass note. Now, before I do that, I'm going to just play my guitar here. Now, the guitar, the reason I've chosen E major is because the guitar really is an E, is, is in E. You've got the, the main strings. You've got E, B and E there, which are the root and the fifth of E major. So if I play an E chord now, I can move that shape. around the fretboard but keeping the same bass note. So I can get some quite complicated sounding chords by just moving that shape. E. That's actually E minor seven. If I put the bar finger across and move the E chord up here completely, I would get a G. But not if I don't move, if I don't put the bar down. lot of that sort of style of acoustic guitar playing simply because it's it's fun to experiment with where you put those where you put those chord shapes it doesn't necessarily follow that you know the theory of what's going on but actually you know I'm I mean I'm affluent in music theory but I realize that it's not actually for everyone and very often your ears are what decides what sounds good or not so with that in mind, I'm going to play that same thing. I played this on the guitar. So 
So, on the piano, you hold your E. Then we've got the same thing there. I had an A chord and a B chord on the guitar, but I kept that bass note of E. go. Now, you can get some quite complicated chords with this, and it's very welcome. Now, I'm going to return to C major just so that it's, it sort of makes it a little bit clearer in terms of playing the white notes on the piano, because this is a good place to start. I only went to E major just so that you could hear that the guitar and the iPad were kind of doing basically the same thing. So, returning to C major now. Now we have some different chords there. If I put a C with an E minor chord, what I'm actually playing there is a C major seven. So wherever you are on the iPad, if you're playing the first, if you're playing the main chord and you jab the one on the left, you're getting the major seven version of it. So that's your major seven. If I tap the C again and then play an A minor, I get C6. Okay, so I get C6. I get some really nice things going here, some quite complicated chords. Some of the names are slightly trickier and you know, you've got to weigh it up. Do you, do you really want to remember the names of these chords? But the concept of it is much more important. If I have a C chord, a C bass with a G chord, I get like a major nine. So it's like a, a major seventh, but with the extra extension, you get the major ninth in C, which is the note D, which is in your G chord. So you could combine the E minor and the G. Notice you can't play two chords at once. That's okay, that's okay. You can change all of this, of course, afterwards when you edit. So the possibilities are endless. Now, C with an F chord. You can't really name that chord. It's like C6 sus. You wouldn't really say that. But C with a B flat. This is called, this is called the seven sus or an 11 chord erroneously. Seven sus is, is much, much more accurate. It's neither major nor minor, this chord. It doesn't have an E or an E flat in. So that really does set it apart with those other chords. etc. Now you can do things like this with the other chords here, the other bass notes. The C and the B flat here, you can do that. The G and the F, you can do that with. The D and the C, the A and the G. And to, well, actually, no, you can't do it this one because that's a minor chord. You need a major chord above it. Now, the way that these chords are arranged, you think, why don't you put them in alphabetical order? Because I can't find A. So start looking on an advent calendar for the next door to open. Eh, one, uh, there's two. Uh. 
Now, the reason they're arranged like this is because it makes musical sense. Music is built on what's called the circle of fifths. So if we've got the C in the middle, if we go to the left on this screen, it goes up in fifths. C to G, that's up a fifth. C, D, E, F, G. Then G to D. G, A, B, C, D. And etc. all the way to the end. And then it goes down fifths the opposite way. C, B, A, G, F, F, E, D, C, B flat. And then B diminished is kind of on its own at the end. Just push it to the side and hope it'll go away. No. So there is a way of doing this. Now, if I, um, I'm just going to speed the tempo up to, let's try 140, just to, just to give it something to do. So I'm going to auto play this now. Now, though, notice that the individual layers have gone. We've got the left hand here and then the chords in the right hand if you want to play both at once you jab the little one at the top and it'll give you both hands together sometimes if you're playing at a fast tempo, it won't quite catch what you want it to do. You know, it'll just auto play and you have to be really almost before well, you have to be before the beat with the next chord in order to catch it. Um, you can, of course, edit this afterwards. But I'm going to try that same thing that I did on guitar. Uh, and I'm going to go back to E major so that we can see what it sounds like on both things. complicated and I've forgotten that you can just tap the E and leave it and you can just change the chords above it. So let's have a go at that. Okay, I had something else stored there. <laughs> I'm just going to solo this out. That was my percussion thing yesterday. So here's the piano on its own. I didn't catch my first note there. So I'm going to go to edit. And then in the window here, you can see that there's no bass note at the beginning. It's easy. You just stick one in. So it was an E. Perhaps a little bit loud at the start. So I'll just oh, undo that. It's because I still had the pencil drawing the notes. It thought I wanted to delete it. So. Velocity, I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. There we go. So, I'm just going to loop that. There we go. And then I'm going to play the guitar along with it, with that same idea, and see if it works. So I'm going to play bar eight to give myself a, a one bar count in. Right now, if I wanted to have this sort of whole the whole song to be this sort of arrangement of chords with just the single E bass note, I can go in and do that. So if I go back to the, the piano, here's my row of chords here. Perhaps I'd like that E to the G, the E minor seven that I uh, specified just now. If you go to edit chords, we could change the D sharp diminished, for example, to an E minor chord. There we go. And there, there it is. It won't, however, change anything that you have recorded. So if you're doing another section on the tune and you want to go and do, a, you know, you want to modulate, which means to change key in the middle of your tune, you can just specify a whole load of new chords and record that section without affecting what you've recorded. So it's an extremely powerful way of getting a, a pretty good result here. Now, splitting the bass 
and the chords is only possible on the piano plugins. If I go to the guitar one, for example, uh, I'll just close that window and add another track, uh, get my guitar, there we go, smart guitar. Notice that it gives you strings, Now the bottom string here is not necessarily the root note, and that's where the problems would perhaps start. You can to a certain extent you can do it, but if I play that E bass note and then play the B chord, it cuts that E, um, e string short, cuts that bottom E short but you could extend it when you come to edit. So in a way you can kind of do it, but the piano is rather more convenient in that regard. So there is a, an example of how you can get some more sort of exotic chords from just the basic ones on GarageBand.